Hello everybody, David Kennedy, Canopy Realtor Association, MLS president, uh, here with just another ordinary realtor who did some extraordinary things. Hi there. Hey David, I'm Alice Walker and I've been around a long time. I am finishing out my 50th year in real estate. Wow. I know you don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, 50 years ago, let's take you back. How did you get into real estate? How'd you get in? It was kind of, I backed into it sort of. I was uh, president, I was looking around for what to do with my life and I was president of a young woman's club and I followed Sandra Townsend as president. And Sandra came to me and she had opened her real estate company and she wanted, Chet Snow Sr. had told her I would be a good realtor. So she asked me to get into real estate, which I did. But the funny thing is, I thought real estate was just like used car salesmen, not very respectable. And I didn't tell anybody I was in the business for over six months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what you're in the business in 71, what, what begins to draw you into serving in a leadership capacity here at, at the association? Well, Sandra helped me out. She kept promoting me as top agent of the month. In, it was only in her company, but to the newspaper, it looked like the whole world I was top agent of the month. <laughs> so over the years, uh, and I've always been a, attracted to leadership, so I just kind of fell into it. Now, in the years leading up to you being president, uh, it's my understanding that they did things a little different uh, I think the board of directors selected the president, and is is your year the first year the general membership my voted? Year, my year was uh, somewhat of a controversial year because we made a lot of changes, and one change was the membership wanted to elect the president and not have the board just appoint a president. So I was the first president elected uh, by the membership, and it, we had we had a wonderful agent who was very skilled in parliamentary procedure and she insisted that we conduct our meetings properly and there was no uh, good old boy uh, stuff going on and she would correct us and we would have to do it completely by Robert's rules of order and it really it was amazing but we had to hire a parliamentarian to sit on the stage and I conducted meetings like this the president will accept a motion for about so-and-so, or the president uh, announces that the committee does not, a committee motion does not need a second. And I was into Robert's Rules of Orders that whole year. And uh, it was different, very different. Well, Robert's Rules of Order still linger on. So I that, know. <laughs> they are here. Um, so you effectively went from the first six months in the business, not really telling anybody, to being the, uh, the, the, the highest vote getter uh, to, to be president, the first ever. But How see, many people that took almost, you? what, 12, 15 years. Well, I guess if your name's in the paper so much, I guess this is a top <laughs> agent, it didn't take long. <laughs> so what, um, if, if you look back, uh, I guess we were transitioning from around your time as president from MLS books to, I guess, what? Uh, were, we, were we getting tired of printing? Were we doing computers Oh, I at love this time? those books. I mean, I was one of the old guard. We had, we started real estate with uh, loose leaf uh, binders and we'd go pick up the new sheets every week and we'd have to look through the binder and replace sheets and, uh, but you really knew the market because you had to look at those sheets and then we transitioned into a printed book and we had our own printing press in the association. And then we transitioned to have the printing done outside of the association. But it was very hard for the old guard, including me, to turn loose of those books. <laughs> so when the, the printing press inside the association you went to somebody outside. Was it basically the same people doing it? They just were no, no longer part of the association. How did that transition go? I'm not sure. I can't remember that. I know we helped the, the guys that were in the association set up their own business outside. So maybe maybe they did do it uh, 
arm's length. I'm not sure. Not so, sure. well, that sounds like you guys, you, you took care of them. But, yeah. dear, but Mickey Fisher was before me, and she introduced, uh, or she was involved in presenting to the membership a step into the future, and that was the thermal printers that we had that were taking the place of the book. And they weren't really computers because we couldn't do anything but MLS on them. But Mickey started that, and then during my uh, presidency, we voted to take those on and dis uh, dispose of the book. We didn't get rid of the books, but we made them we made people pay, I think, more for the book if they didn't do, do the thermal. And so uh, there was a great controversy. I was not very well thought of at that time because we just, we just did it. And uh, So you, I read that, you, that, that the expense for this was half a million dollars uh, for roughly 2,000 realtors, which equates to 250 per member. If I as president today did a $250 per member expenditure, it would be in excess of $5 million. H How were the finances back then in 1980s? Well, then? I think the finances have always been pretty good. Uh, we've, we've, we have had an association that has been well run from the beginning. It grew a lot and changed, but it changed uh, in a good way and improved. And progressed. So it wasn't. It was a. Re, it was a fiscally responsible decision. It just you know, realtors had to change, but everybody's a little bit averse to change. Is that well? Kind of and, was? and we've made similar decisions in the last few years. I think where it you know, like building this building, that was a big financial step, but a very wise one and very well thought out and very well planned. And we've just had good leadership the whole way, on both sides of the equation. So uh, we'll talk about something that, was, that might have been really hard for you, like maybe a big challenge. I, I think the NAR convention for you in your year was in Hawaii. How hard was it for you to go to Hawaii, <laughs> to Hawaii for your NAR convention? Is that true, by the way? Did you go to Hawaii? I went to Hawaii. How was Hawaii? You got, you, I, don't, I haven't had a chance to go to Hawaii on an NAR convention. Well, How I recommend it? you go someday. <laughs> uh, but I went on the verge of having pneumonia because when I ever left my company to go anywhere, I was always working till midnight, trying to line things up, get everything set up so that I could be gone for a week or two. And this time I was going to Hawaii and then to China for three weeks. And so it was a whole month. And um, it, it was an interesting time. That's about all I want to say. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, this is one thing that uh, I don't know if we've ever had anything this impressive. Um, there was a foundation event for Habitat for Humanity. So foundation event, Habitat for Humanity. I believe we raised about $72,000. Do you remember the guest list for that? Uh, oh, Jimmy Carter. <laughs> oh my goodness. I loved him. <laughs> you got to meet the, pre the former president of the United States came to a foundation event while you were president. I have a picture of myself with him. Oh, yeah. okay, all right. And with his wife. Rosalind. Yeah, okay. Rosalind. So what were they like? And with Mickey Fisher. <laughs> you can't forget <laughs> Mickey. So they come to the event. Obviously, uh, over the years, we, we see the dedication the former president has to Habitat for Humanity. Uh, what, if you can recall, what was that meeting like? What was it, you know, what was it like at that time uh, t to have, it had to be a huge buzz to, to have a foundation event where a former president comes. Well, it was at, at the home of, I think, a commercial realtor, uh, but a nice home on um, Sharon Road. Okay. And it was very hot that day. It was, everybody was <laughs> in misery because of parking cars and trying to get in line, but that's how we did it. That's wow. how we raised that money. Did he make a, a speech or anything? No. Did, he just hung out? Yeah. Yeah. He, he just came and we welcomed him and he walked through and people shook his hand. And, took pictures and wow, wow. Yeah. and we raised it, money. It was fun. Okay, I, I wow. So um, is that one of the, when you look at back at, at some of the things that you were proud of over the years, um, is that something that sticks out or is there there's something Well, else? it does, it does. And, but I think, I think one of the things that I'm very proud of is being able to build three different real estate companies and 
the fun thing was mentoring other agents and teaching them and helping them to be stars and some of them still are working and that's great. Um, many of them moved out or changed careers but a great number, I would say 12 or 15 are still in the business and so that was fun. So the, the favorite memories uh, that come back, would you say it's from those agents and the relationships you've had with them? We still, I have a group of, of ladies that we still get together once a year and they worked with me 20, 30 years ago. So as president, obviously there's challenges for each of us. What was, what do you think your biggest challenge uh, was when you were president, some of the biggest obstacles you had to overcome? I don't think we had obstacles. We had a lot of challenges and I think the main challenge was Robert's Rules of Order, but I had been president of several other clubs before, and I had a working knowledge of the book, and I had the book, so. <laughs> so in, in 87, do you remember who the, the mayor was in Charlotte? I don't know, was it Eddie Knox? It might have been, it might have been. He's still around, I've had to call his yeah, firm. Cause <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really sure because I've had a lot of history in my life and I can't remember a lot. Well, <laughs> the question I'm leading to is, I think in the past six or eight years, uh, RPAC has been touted as 21 and 0 uh, fighting transfer taxes. And I read. Oh, in, we fought the transfer I read in tax. 1987 you were fighting oh, transfer yeah. taxes. What was that like? We had a very big fight over that, but we won. Okay. We were able to keep it from happening. Why do they? Why do you think? Why do you think they, it still keeps coming? Because they need money. <laughs> yes. They need money, you know. And yeah. that's they look for places like now they're they're charging a tax for services that mm -hmm. they didn't charge before. So I think as we grow, there's, and there's a lot of waste, you know that, mm -hmm. in I think, the government. So one of the things that, I think property is one of the bigger things that, that can be taxed. You know, property taxes are, are big, and we, we as realtors, we broker something that is very taxable. And so how, what was, what was RPAC to you back then uh, when you were doing, what kind of political connections were you making other than just hanging out with the former president of the United States? What, 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 <laughs> what were some of the political things? Well, we were going to Washington to talk to the legislators. Uh, we were trying to raise money for RPAC from the very beginning. And it's grown a lot because I think realtors are understanding better how important it is to support the people that support our uh, business, our, our industry. So did any, of the, uh, did any of the folks that you mentored, did they ever come and, and get involved in leadership here like you did, like on the executive committee? Uh, did, they, did they ever come through or were they just uh, strictly out into the real estate realm, like making money and, and, and building their business? Uh, well, there have been a few that have, have followed along. Good. Right, right. Good. Good. What, um, are, are, you, are you just as proud as the, of them kind of following your footsteps to be, uh, you know, a, a servant of, of, and, a, and a leader here at the association? I think that they, they have found leadership in, in many different directions. Uh, but I have to tell you one story that I think is so funny. But when I had Alice Walker Realtors, one of my companies, I would interview agents and I was going to build the highest standard, the best company that anybody ever had in real estate in the Charlotte area. And so we interviewed people and then after I interviewed them, my best friend Donna Covington would take them to lunch and she would interview them and I would trust her judgment. Mm -hmm. So one day I interviewed Dee Dee Domit. Well Dee Dee had, was get, getting her real estate license and uh, Donna took her to lunch after I interviewed her, and Donna came back and she said, you really goofed, you dropped the ball. She left here thinking she would never be good enough for Alice Walker Realtors. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, go get her, please go get her. <laughs> so we got Dee Dee, okay. and we, we trained Dee Dee, and she became a star in the, in the real estate market in Charlotte, but that was so funny. So uh, a lot of people, whether they read history or not, they may not know of you know some of the challenges that that women encountered uh, at, as business owners or, or trying to conduct business. 
uh, back uh, in the 70s and in the 80s. What were um, some of the challenges just, you know, being a woman back then? Well, I remember showing houses, uh, working for Sandra Townsend, and Ralph Howey was a, a very well-known, uh, respected builder, and he was holding an open house himself. And I, I showed the house, and he said, you women are going to ruin real estate. <laughs> so back then, we were not that welcomed. But Sandra always wanted to be the first president, but she ended up being the second woman president, and Jackie Kaiser was the first woman president. And I think after that, the door was opened, and they, the National Association formed a woman's branch of the Realtor Association, and I said, why do we want to break off and be a woman's branch? We'd, we've been fighting to be in the middle of, of the regular membership. So uh, that didn't last forever. I don't think they still have that group, but. So what does it mean uh, to be a realtor? Now, obviously it may mean different in 1971 as it does in 2021, but, but how is the evolution of, of, of realtors? What's stayed the same and what's been different? I think we've been growing professionally from the very beginning, and I think it's much more professional now. I'm very proud uh, to be a realtor. When I first started, it was hard because I, I couldn't find that element, and it, but it grew on me. And I think the uh, people are, real estate people are just much more into it uh, as far as professionalism and the quality that they offer their uh, clients. I think we are servant leaders and we need to take our clients by the hand and guide them to their goals. And then if we do that, we reach our own goals. So I don't think it's changed a lot. It's just improved a lot over the years. And yeah, it's great. We're one of the few last remaining self-regulated uh, uh, industries. So I think you're, a, lot of, a lot of what you said resonates. So let's talk about um, some of the political uh, things that we have to, to, to pay attention to and, and issues that, that we're on. Um, we, it, recent, in recent years, we have fought transfer taxes as realtors, but I, I remember in, in 1987 reading about you, I think this is back when Harvey Gantt was the mayor, you were in City Hall uh, uh, you know, advocating against uh, transfer taxes as well. We were also in Raleigh. Uh, pushing the envelope to get away from transfer tax. We kept telling our clients how much it was going to cost them and we fought that hard and we won. So it feels like that, as realtors, do you feel like we are in a position where we understand that when taxes or, 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 or new fees come down the pipe, if, if, we, if, we're, if we don't stop it, it gets passed down to the customers and, it makes it, and the clients and it makes it harder for them to, to buy that home or, or afford that home. It was that true back then as it is today? Absolutely. It, and, and of course, all of those costs have, have crept up as the years go by and everything is much more expensive now. And I used to sell $40,000 houses that are now selling for 600 and that sort of thing. <laughs> so. Wow. So what advice uh, would you have for, for realtors today in terms of, you know, what, what should we keep an eye on? What should, we, what, what should our true north be? You know, what would you tell a realtor, you know, my age or younger uh, in the business today? Oh, I have so many advices to give. <laughs> First of all, I probably would not open a company because the rewards are good if your broker, if you have, if you're your own broker and you own your own company, but they're not financial. Uh, it's very hard for brokers, and agents do not understand that. They need to support their brokers and and realize they're providing a, a place for them to hang their hat and uh, have a good career. I think that we need to always do the thing, the right thing. We need to guide our clients and our customers take them by the hand, help them uh, succeed with, with what they're trying to, to do. And if we do that, the money will follow us. Anytime we get the money first, as realtors, we're in trouble and we will be in trouble. So we have to keep the client first all the time.